In this presentation, we will take a look at the payroll tax journal entry within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. In order to open the open windows, we go to the view drop down and the open windows list. Like the payroll employee journal entry, the payroll tax journal entry can be confusing within QuickBooks as well because it's not as easy to just see that journal entry related to just the payroll taxes. It's important to know it, however, and be able to derive it, one, because we might need to input it from an outside payroll service, such as ADP or uh, Paychex, into our system, or because we just need to understand how the items are being recorded in the system. And the journal entry is really the easiest way to think about that process, but QuickBooks will piece it out in different formats for different reasons. So when we go in and try to analyze what is going on within QuickBooks, it's always going to go back to uh, paychecks and paycheck detail. So let's take a look at that. Let's analyze what the journal entry is and how QuickBooks will be reporting it. So to do that, let's take a look at a paycheck. We're going to go to the banking dropdown and we will go to the register, use register. We're going to go to the checking account and we'll start up once again with Anthony Moore's first check. Let's take a look at Anthony Moore's first check on 2-1. These are all paychecks, by the way. <laughs> we'll be running this payroll problem later. It's going to be great. And then we're going to go to the paycheck detail. And so for this paycheck note that we looked in the employer side, I mean, the employee payroll is really all this side. When we think of payroll, we really think about this side. When you think about your payroll check stub, Within QuickBooks, that's going to be this side of things, where we had the gross pay, everything we took out of gross pay, and then the net check, as we basically would see in the pay stub. What we don't understand as much is because we don't get, as employees, we, we don't see it as often as the employer half of it. So although this side is kind of more easy and more straightforward to some degree, it's just a, uh, it's less understood because we don't see it as much as employees. As employers, we'll get we'll get used to it <laughs> and it'll be very known because this is going to be items that we're paying over and above the payroll items here so within quickbooks note that this is the employer side of the items meaning we're paying these this amounts out of the the employer uh, money over and above what we promise to pay the employees this stuff is all stuff that really we're not paying over and above what we agreed to pay the employees we agreed to pay the employees this much, and then we took these out of their check to pay it for them. But this is stuff that we're paying on top of the gross pay. And so this is really the employer journal entry. We have the California stuff. That's going to be state taxes. We won't get too much into that here. But we have the, the Social Security, the Medicare, uh, and the FUTA. Those are the main federal, and then the SUTA kind of related to the federal unemployment. So we'll take a look at that as well. And these items, the journal entry is going to be more straightforward for the most part in that we're going to have a debit to payroll expenses for them and then a credit to the liability because we're going to be owing them. So let's take a look at what uh, the reports will look like. I'm going to close this back out. Close this back out. We're going to go to the reports up top. Look at our main two reports, which will be the company financials and the profit and loss. Let's start there with the profit and loss. That's a good place to start. 020118 to 020118. I'm just looking at that one day because that's the payroll uh, that we had, the first payroll. So we, don't, we only have one payroll item in there, which is on February 1st, 2018 to February 1st. Now, what we've done is we've broken up the payroll tax expenses. We'll talk about how to do that at the end of the problem. Just note that uh, when we go through this payroll problem, just note that the default for QuickBooks will be to group these two things together, which is kind of not really proper in terms of reporting it because uh, you'll want to know the difference between the two typically to be able to make sure that the payroll is being reported and you can tie it into the 941s. We'll talk about that later. But QuickBooks will typically default it to be in the same account because, once again, it's easier. It's easier to just see, okay, everything's just grouped into payroll. But we're going to break this out here for the example. If we go into the payroll taxes and double click on it, this will be just the payroll 
uh, employer payroll taxes. There's, the payroll tax expense should only be employer. Notice we only have one paycheck, but multiple items related to it, all in this one account for the payroll tax expense. If we go into any of these, we got the 251 and the 58, the 24 and the 138. If we double click on those and the four, but we're not concentrating on that. <laughs> if we go into any of those, then these are going to be the amounts. The so Social Security, the Medicare, the Federal Unemployment, the California Training Tax, and the um, California Unemployment. Now, these match what's over here for Social Security and Medicare. But just remember, this is the employer side employer taxes, and therefore we're really concentrating on this side. That's what we're looking at. So typically we think of them as two different journal entries when we're doing them as a journal entry. So if I close this out, then the journal entry would be a debit to payroll tax expense. The other side is going to be on the balance sheet, reports up top, company and financial, profit and loss, balance sheet standard. And then we're going to change this to 02, uh, 0118, uh, February 1st, 2018, just so we have that one paycheck for the detail. If we double click on this item, there's our paycheck. And so... Uh, it's now, now note that this really isn't part of our journal. I should, probably shouldn't even have gone in here. But if I double click on this item and click on this item, this is the payroll that we just looked at that's being processed. The check is coming out, 3,517.75. It doesn't really have anything to do with these employ, uh, employer items, however, because we didn't pay them yet. We haven't paid them. So really cash is not affected. So I'm going to close this back out. Close this back out. Although this payroll, closing this back out, is paid with cash, the journal entry we're considering, the employer side, the payroll taxes, is not included here. It is included in the payroll liabilities. Now, once again, they're grouped together all in payroll liabilities. So when we go on the payroll liabilities, it's going to include employer, employee, and uh, all the groupings of the different payroll taxes we owe, Social Security, Medicare, uh, federal unemployment, state unemployment. So it looks overwhelming, even though there's only one employee here with all that is owed. The main two we'll look at, if we look at these two items, the 251.88, which is doubled, and the 58.91, clicking on that, going to the paychecks, that we're, look, we're considering this side, we're considering this journal entry related to the employer portion. So we got the Social Security and Medicare, and then we'll have the federal unemployment and the California. Within QuickBooks, it groups them all together, though. So it's also they're also reporting these items into the payroll at the same time with the same paychecks. So again, when, when we consider it with terms of debits and credits, it's easiest for us to break it out into a journal entry. When we look at it in QuickBooks, QuickBooks wants to give us more detail. And so we can we kind of have to piece together those two conceptual ideas in our head, what the easiest thing to do is in terms of which accounts are going up and down in journal entries, taking it to journal entries, to QuickBooks, where we're going to say, okay, it's all in the paycheck. How can we kind of rearrange our thinking to know which accounts are going up and down and consider the detail by check? And to consider that a bit more in depth, uh, let's look at a payroll that has two checks. And so if we go to the last payroll, if we go to the... Uh, checking account again and we go to the last payroll, payroll where we have Anthony and uh, Judy now we have two paychecks so if we look at that payroll item going to the profit and loss and we're going to change the dates to 123118 and 123118 and 123118 and we look at the payroll tax expense now going into that item we have one, two, three, four, five items for each of them, but they're going to be the uh, just the two checks, just the two checks that we're talking about, the detail of them. Now, some of these are going to be zero because the FUTA and the SUTA have been paid, but they still have the zero there. If we go into, for example, these two, and we go into the, that detail, we're talking the the 5377 and the 3504 for the social security and medicare closing this back out closing this back out so again in terms of a journal entry if i was to think about this all in one journal entry like it came from adp or paychecks and outside payroll company we'd probably think about it as a debit of 9,215.36 to payroll tax expense 
but if we're thinking about it by journal entry, by employee, by employee, we'd have to debit these, these items per employee to get that detail to break out by employee, uh, which of course we need if we're going to process all the reports within QuickBooks. Going back to the balance sheet, then the other side, if we say this is as of 0231, or let's say 12, 12, 31, 1, 8, December 31st, uh, 2018, this liability account then, if I go into it, is going to be looking overwhelming again because it's got two employees in it and it's got both the employee side and employer side grouped in here. So when we think about it in terms of journal entry standpoint, going back in here, we'd have to think, okay, I can think about it as one big journal entry uh, related to the two employees and try to piece out the employer and employee portion. Or we can think of the detail of the two employees and try to piece this together. If we were to enter it from ADP and paychecks, we would probably just group the two together and put the lump sum to get the detail, I mean, to get the, the general information in there. If we were to see, if we want to see the detail in our system, as we would if we process payroll within QuickBooks, then we need to break it out by check. And we can think of the journal entry in a, in a similar fashion, a journal entry per employee. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.